From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss the efficacy of loyalty and rewards programs. Joining us is Burke Cooper, who is the CMO of Fetch Rewards, which is America's number one reward app. With over 13 million active users, Fetch Rewards surpassed $100 billion in actionable gross merchandise value, GMV, making the company equivalent to the nation's seventh largest retailer. And in addition to providing us with our guest today, Fetch Rewards is also a sponsor of the MarTech Podcast. And today, Burke and I are going to talk about loyalty and reward program creation. All right, here's the first part of my conversation with Burke Cooper, the CMO of Fetch Rewards. Burke, welcome to the MarTech Podcast. Ben, thanks for the intro. Appreciate it. Excited to have you on the show. Let me first start off by saying thank you. Your company, Fetch Rewards, a sponsor of the MarTech Podcast. Thank you for supporting our mission to create great content and also for your time to tell us a little bit about rewards programs. I appreciate all your support. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. It's That was a great intro. We're in a fortunate situation where we're growing so fast, we've already eclipsed some of those numbers that you stated. So it's been a fun ride. <laughs> oh, geez. 14 billion monthly active users. Congratulations. <laughs> no, we're up to 17 million. And it just shows like there's a lot of tailwind behind what we're doing, what we're trying to accomplish. And so it's great to be here discussing it. So clearly you found some incredible success with onboarding users and the idea behind the app that you've created, which is the big promotion for Fetch, it's the the core product, is people can come, they can scan their receipts, and then they get rewards, points, programs. Tell me a little bit about the actual app that you've built. What is it and why are people signing up by the millions? At the core of what we do, we give people an easy way to save on the things that they buy every day. We have over 6 million daily active users scanning 9 million receipts. And the reason they do that is they get rewarded. So they get fetch points on every single receipt. When they buy products from the partners that we have a relationship with on the app, they get even more points. They turn those points into things like free gift cards for wherever they're going. So it's just this really fun, easy way to save that's taken off a life of its own. So the funny thing to me is that the mechanism of actually scanning receipts seems like a high friction interaction relative to the digital world we live in. I think of some of the other apps that are out there and reward programs where, I don't know, I go to the gas station, I enter my Safeway number and I get some points, right? I go to Walgreens, I enter my phone number and those things are accumulated. Users have to take a physical action of basically taking a picture of their receipts. What is the reward? What is the incentive you get them to actually hold the physical paper and take a picture of it in your app? Why are they doing that? It's fun and it's easy. So What's interesting about those passive programs that you explained is you really have no relationship with them. It's not something that you think about. You go, you do this thing, this passive passive relationship happens in the background. By creating an interface for people to have a relationship with and create meaningful friction, what I mean by that is meaningful friction is the analogy is if you think about the Apple box, right? When you buy a new iPhone, and you take the box off, there's that suction, that little moment of friction that they purposefully interject into product design that builds in a little bit of anticipation. Scanning a receipt is a very similar dynamic, right? Where you create, yes, it's this thing that you have to physically do, but it gives us the ability to make it this fun, rewarding experience that people have. They get this little endorphin release. They're having fun. They're getting rewarded in real time. And that's been a powerful mechanism for us to be able to create the habit that we have there's people in our company that say we're merchants of fun within the save environment. And it's that combination of have fun and save money that we've kind of unlocked. 
So there's the wow moment. You mentioned the suction in opening your new iPhone box. I actually got a piece for a coffee maker that I'd had for almost a decade and the top broke and so I couldn't grind coffee. And what came in it? The little old school pop paper, you know, like the little plastic wrap where you can press on it and the little air bubbles pop. And I cut it into two pieces and gave it to my kids because there's that moment of like, I'm pressing, I'm pressing and it pops (laughs) and it's exciting, mostly for young children. You've manufactured that in a digital rewards program. There's also the rewards component. What are people getting out of scanning their receipts? Yeah, so you're going to get points on every single receipt that you scan, fetch points, no matter where that receipt is from. And and we actually, if you back up before the pandemic, it was only grocery that we were rewarding on, the grocery category, inclusive of convenience and gas and drug and all those. But where you'd buy classic CPG products, we expanded that because we saw people were scanning all their receipts, everything. And so we expanded it. And now we accept you scan any receipt and we're going to reward you points. And what that results in is our users are scanning 90% of their, like we're capturing 90% of their spend. So the ability then to see across all purchases and influence all that behavior is really powerful. The reason they're doing it is the combination to save money and have fun. So they're getting the explicit value of fetch points and they're turning that into gift cards. So Coming up here in holiday shopping season, you'll be able to turn your fetch points into an Amazon gift card or whatever it is that you want to buy. All right. So there's an incentive for the customers to have this moment where they're uploading their receipts. Now, we talked about the consumer side. Let's talk about the commercial side. The reason why the app is so successful and so valuable, why you can offer rewards for the interaction is you're getting access to data. So talk to me a little bit about rewards and loyalty programs. Why is this such an effective business as opposed to a way to give rewards, which obviously has a sort of negative ROI? Having somebody scan a receipt, building an app and giving them money for it, there has to be some sort of commercial relationship there. So a lot of rewards programs have been stood up over the years. A lot of times that's siloed. So if you think about, you know, MyCoke Rewards was a very successful one. There have been different rewards programs by different brands. It's really tough to scale those because you end up subsidizing your most loyal customers. The average person doesn't want 20, 30, 40, 50 different rewards programs. They want one, right? They want one easy, simple way. So aggregating a lot of consumers into one place where they're scanning their receipts and now you can do really smart behavior-led targeting means that we can shift behavior and reward the user for that. They are on fetch to understand which products are going to reward them for purchasing, which stores are going to reward them for going into that store and buying XYZ. So those shifts of behavior through the fetch platform with brands activating on fetch, that's a really powerful thing for brands at scale. And that's ultimately what we've unlocked. It's data-led targeting, right? Data-led behavior changes that we capture. You said the words, the hardest thing to do in business, change consumer behavior. I understand that you can catalog all the purchases. You can understand where people are buying, what they're buying. And for the brands that you're working with, that's incredibly valuable information. But how do you take the next step and actually change what somebody is thinking? How do you get them to move from Crest toothpaste to aim toothpaste or whatever it is. When a brand comes to Fetch Rewards and says, all right, you've got a ton of data. I want more customers. How are you able to do that? So we set up for brands the ability to really like the upper bounds of their imagination is what they can do on Fetch as far as changing behavior, right? So if you think about a brand that's in a really highly competitive category, you can all of a sudden target anybody that's bought the new entrant if you're trying to defend against somebody that's coming into your category. You can now activate an offer that's aimed at people that have bought your category, maybe bought that product. So if you're a brand that's trying to increase frequency or increase, or if you're a company or a retailer that's trying to get more foot traffic, more people in, you can target people that are buying in your category but haven't come into your store in the last X number of days or weeks or months the precision targeting that you can do because of this data that we see on the Fetch platform is extremely powerful. And then coming out of that campaign that you run on Fetch, you can understand the exact impact that it had, which is a really important side. I think measurement is a place and a topic today in marketing that's certainly top of mind as the privacy changes have reduced signal. And what we do is we give you the best way to understand, the cleanest way to understand what the impact of these programs are on your business. 
It's interesting, you know, often on this podcast, we're talking a lot about digital brands, where understanding what your consumers interaction, did they purchase? What marketing channels did they purchase from? That's data that we just inherently know and understand. If there was a click, I know my marketing campaign drove somebody to my website, and then I can track if they bought a product. Retail, restaurants, right? All sorts of service businesses, anything that's got a physical location. It's really hard to understand what marketing activities are driving your consumers and which are the consumers that actually purchased your product. So Fetch gives you the ability to understand not only where people are buying, but what they're buying. It leads me back to this idea of, okay, I can target and I can understand all sorts of different buying behaviors. I could target my competitors. I can retarget LAPS customers. There's all sorts of useful understanding and knowledge you can get out of who is buying what and where they're buying it in physical locations. But tell me about the activation component. How do you actually get someone into your restaurant? How do you get them to stop using your competitor and start using your? What's the ad vehicle that gets people to interact? So the way that this comes to life is if you're a brand on Fetch, you're going to set up offers. So there's a lot of different components within the app for ways to communicate. But the general mechanism is you will create some offer that's an incentivization telling a group of users that, hey, if you do this thing, if you buy this product, you will get this number of Fetch points. It's as simple as that. You're rewarding them explicitly with Fetch points for the action that you want them to take. And you can target that at a very precise level and optimize points based on are they lapsed, like you said, or are they a loyal user and you're looking for a surprise and delight for them? Or maybe they're going to take a little bit more because they're a competitive shopper and you want to drive trial. So there's all these different use cases, but the ability to set up an offer within the Fetch ecosystem and target them to drive that behavior is extremely powerful and effective. Now on the measurement side, what's important there is we do think about it as it's a performance engine for the physical world. So all of a sudden now you can do performance marketing for physical retail, which is extremely powerful to think about. The way that we set up our measurement, which is super important to understand, is the same way they do it in the scientific community with control and exposed. So we hold out a randomized sample of individuals that don't see the brand, don't see the offer, and we measure that against the exposed group. And that's how when you're seeing enough, the breadth of data that we're seeing, and you take this scientifically rigorous approach, you control for all other elements that are oftentimes missed within measurement, inflation tailwinds, any trade that you're doing in the store, any promotions that you're doing, because it's control exposed, it balances that out. So you're truly getting an understanding of here's the incremental, we call it the verified incremental return. Here's the verified incremental return that you are getting for being on Fetch. Give me an example here. What's a product or someone that's done performance marketing for the physical world? I understand this sort of test and control and you're able to sort of normalize all the other factors that are happening. What's an example of a brand that's done performance marketing to drive an interaction in the physical world? Right now, all the brands on our app are doing just that, which is amazing and super rewarding for us to see. And a real world example right now is Unilever. Right now they have a, they call it mix and match. So it's a spend $30 across any of their products at any grocery store. It's hard to not spend $30 on Unilever products. There's a ton of Unilever products. So here's the magic is because of the dynamics of our program, running this where it's spend $30 across any grocery store, we piece all those together for you as a user. So if you buy shampoo here, ice cream there, both those purchases are going to count. So spend $30 at any grocery store and you're going to get 10,000 points, which is equivalent to $10 in rewards that you can turn those into gift cards. So we're looking at that behavior across all grocery. And now it's a cross company offer that they can activate. So they truly now realizing the benefits of scale of all their brands to help lift all ships. That's an example of what we do. And we do that across all of our partners. General Mills has a program that they've stood up, Good Rewards within Fetch, Huggies, Kimberly Clark, PepsiCo, there's, you name it, there's a lot of companies activating in that way. That's a crazy business model in the sense of if Unilever is charging $30 for products and they're giving away the equivalent of a $10 gift card, that means that their margins have to be incredibly high, right? They're giving away a third of their top line revenue just to be able to drive consumer demand. Why is that a good business decision? 
So it's not just the moment of purchase, but it's everything that happens after that. What we do at FET, so it's not a platform where we drive switching behavior, right? You're going to buy this for this offer and then it goes away. We have dynamics within the app where Unilever, for example, they're going to continue to reward you at some amount after you get introduced to those products. So I buy Dove. All of a sudden I come in, I see this offer, I buy Dove and I buy Talenti and Briars and whatever the products are. I now know because of the mechanisms with Infest, they're going to keep rewarding me. So we create that long-term behavior. So the 10,000 points on $30 basket also creates a long-term value for the users that begin buying those products. And we show that time after time that it's the long-term revenue generation. The other thing is, it's not just the baskets that you actually see are well above 30, right? So you throw 30 to buy $30, get 10,000 points, which you actually see in market is people will spend 46 or whatever it is. Uh, we launched the Rebrand podcast this month. It's our fourth podcast in the I Hear Everything Network. It's our brand marketing show. And one of the conversations the host of the podcast had was with a CPG beverage expert. I think it was the person that invented the Arnold Palmer iced tea. Maybe it was Zico coconut water. I forget exactly what product it was. But a lot of what they think about is cans in hands. Once you can get your product into the consumer's hands, they have the experience with it, and then the pattern of behavior begins. Once somebody has trialed the product, they're significantly more likely to continue to purchase. And so by providing these types of rewards, you're not only being able to target your customers, you're basically buying a lost leader. You're getting a can in a hand, getting somebody to trial your product to pay for it, and then hopefully they stick around. Burke, last question I have for you. For the companies that are not in CPG, they're not in sort of the physical retail space, what would you advise them if they're thinking about creating their rewards program? Why is this a good strategy for even some of the digital companies out there? Why do rewards matter? I think if you're looking at creating your own rewards program, I think you should really ask if it's a core competency, if it's something that you're going to do well. I also think you have to think about user experience. Reward programs done right are extremely powerful for building relationships with consumers. Our belief at Fetch is if you create value for a brand, for another company, you deserve to be explicit, explicitly rewarded for that. And that's what we do is we offer a platform that does that for users. It's why they keep coming back because they're getting rewarded for this thing. It's been tried many times in many different variations and I think some of the magic that we've created is the economies of scale so that once you have 17 million people doing this action, companies like Unilever can really benefit across their portfolio of brands, General Mills across their portfolio of brands. And then what it creates is you as a user, it's all these brands, right? So you're getting rewarded now across tons of CPG brands, across a lot of retailers. And as we break into restaurants, and it becomes a really powerful mechanism. I think that there's a lot to learn here from what Fetch has done in the physical retail space in the sense of creating value, not only for consumers, but also for people that are interested in the data that your company possesses. It's a business model that might not be replicable or relevant for every company, but if you're in a space where you're able to collect data that's interesting to other brands, loyalty and rewards programs can be incredibly powerful. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Burke Cooper, the CMO of Fetch Rewards. In part two of this interview, which we'll publish tomorrow, Burke and I are going to discuss why his company created the Fetch Pricing Index. All right, if you can't wait till our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Burke, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter where his handle is Burke underscore Cooper. That's B-I-R-K underscore C-O-O-P-E-R. Or you can visit his company's website, which is FetchRewards.com. F-E-T-C-H Rewards.com. More importantly, you can always download the Fetch Rewards app by going to whatever app store you're using and just search for Fetch. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. 
And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.